So welcome back to Twin Elm Rugby Park where we're playing our last game of this NWL competition as Ontario takes on British Columbia. British Columbia running onto the field past the uh, trophy there. This game brought to you in part by DHL, Gowling's Law Firm, the Government of Canada, Under Armour, CN, Enterprise Public Relations, Marsh Insurance, and Merit Travel. Taking a look at the Ontario lineup. In the front row, Ashley Snyder, Jillian Pegg, and Brianna Cunningham. Morgan Linthwaite and Aaron Vargas in the second row. Alex Grant and Jordan Roundtree in the back row. Mackenzie Fain is the number eight. Scrum half is uh, Brittany Douglas. Mackenzie Higgs is the... Uh, Fly half partnership. In the center, Sarah Guten and Sarah Svoboda. One wing is Louise Chen and Katie Svoboda. The other wing, Stephanie Black, is the fullback. And here are your replacements. Taking a look at British Columbia. Carolyn McEwen, Brittany Sims, and Iona Schamberger in the front row. Cherise Dupreez and Haley Glendening in the second row. Jillian Bogue, Gabrielle Hindley in the back row, and Laura Crow Hutchin is the number eight. Christina Burnham is the scrum half. Kara Galbraith, the fly half. Courtney Sims is one center. Emily Young, the other center. On the wing, Selena McGinnis. The other wing is Jessica Harvey. Lindsay Anderson is the fullback. And your BC replacements. So we're just going to do a little technical adjustment here and be right back with you. So Rose Labreche <coughs> is the whistle bearer in this game. Her assistant will be Amy Murray and Andrew McMaster on the other side of the field. So Ontario kicking off and uh, BC retaining possession through a couple of phases. Got Dustin Hopkins on camera. Gives you some quality pictures, that guy. And now uh, advantage being played and big blast of the whistle. Ontario will retreat 10 meters coming in from the side. So really, uh, this game is down Ontario. Uh, they, can, they can win this whole championship even by losing this game. All they've got to do is get a bonus point and a loss. They can uh, they can go with uh, four tries. But if BC manages a win and a bonus point win, they could sneak through with the championship. That ball knocked on. The throw in by uh, Sims was a little low. So Labresh will bring it in 15. It'll be scrum to Ontario. There's the trophy they're playing for. NWL trophy. Big push being put on by BC, but Ontario coming with the ball cleanly. Ontario 3-0 and coming into this game. BC lost one game to Quebec. They're 2-1. and one. Have 10 points. So th th if BC wins with a bonus point, then it would come down to points for and against. And I believe Ontario holds the advantage there because they've had some big, uh, big wins this week. Cutout pass gets to the inside center. Guten. 
Sorry, that's for BC. Courtney Sims for BC. Anderson, the fullback. She's a useful player. She plays scrum half. She plays wing. But now, quick tap ball. Not quick tap. It was from a knock on there. They were playing advantage. And now they'll have the scrum back on the halfway line. Near perfect conditions for a rugby game. The flags hanging loosely. Not a lot of wind to speak of. Temperature not terribly, terribly high. I mean, it's just, just right. It's sort of 23, 24 degrees. I suppose still warm enough if you're running around out there, but it's nice to watch anyway. Big drive being put on by British Columbia. Ontario's back row tied up immediately. So... Now, big run into the gap, spilled in the tackle. BC wasn't going to be able to do much with that, so LeBrush will bring it back to the knock-on. So these teams feeling each other out in the first three or four minutes here. Uh, no real flow established yet. ONT, the chant you might be hearing in the background there. Scrum half, Christina Burnham waiting for the front rows to get together to the satisfaction of Rose LaBrush, the uh, official. Hails from Ottawa. Front rows stood up and they'll be uh, reset. Put into BC now. Labresh changing sides of the scrum to see what's going on. Now some clean ball for British Columbia. Nice fend off. That ball getting pinched? No, stays BC side. This is an exciting player to watch for BC. Carolyn McEwen, the prop. Very mobile front rower. A patient approach now by British Columbia. Phase after phase, no panic. Just arriving there in numbers to establish the platform. And now that's the uh, fly half, Galbraith. <coughs> Pardon me. Burnham flinging it back to Laura Crow Hutchin, the number eight. Ball goes to ground, but not knocked on. Jillian Bogue into contact. Delayed pass. And a great open field tackle on the fullback. Oh, this is a fullback, Anderson. What a great pass from her on full pace. And that's the kind of uh, skills she's got. And she'll uh, likely move to the scrum half spot when Burnham has uh, had enough. Galbraith is wrapped up. She's tall for a fly half in the women's game. And a nice link up at the midfield between Sims and Emily Young. Both Sims sisters on the field. Brittany Sims in the front row. Courtney in the centers. Now here's a chance. Nice piece through a pair of Ontario tacklers. That ball's gone loose. Secured by BC now outside the Ontario 22. Now penalty against Ontario. Leaving their feet at the breakdown. Tap by Burnham. That's Glendinning, the second row. 
She scored a try yesterday. Now McEwen. Oh, and the nice dummy runner into the line. Anderson, she's got the pace, but the pass. And that'll go to the winger, Selena McGinnis. She scored a great try yesterday. And that opens BC's account at five to nothing. So Anderson coming into the line, using her spectacular pace and her precise passing. And she knew when to just release that pass at the last second as the cover defense was about to take her on. She just released McGinnis and touched down in the corner. It was pretty clinical and a great start for this British Columbia team. BC substitutes looking on here on this near sideline. Second in there is Rosie Lang. She scored two big tries as a replacement yesterday. Great job by her. So we see the kick here by Galbraith. It's going to be a tough one, and she's just kicked it straight on. So might need to adjust uh, the sights there a little bit. Score will stay 5 nothing. Nine minutes gone in this game. BC holding a 5 nothing lead in Ontario. I think it's got to get rid of the jitters and get a hold of this ball. BC has had most of the possession here in the early going. With the restart, that's gone 10. Taken by McEwen. Oh, it's some play off the ball there. Things getting feisty. Now, Anderson into the line again. Look how dangerous she is. Oh, and a, a miscue turns into an opportunity. Great job by McGinnis to keep that in play and get it to the inside center, Sims. Now Burnham flinging it back right, and that's McEwen again. Look at how much she gets involved in carrying the ball. Oh, and skipped hands. Gets out to Laura Crow Hutchin, but we'll have the knock on. But great bit of play by Anderson. Went to make the pass, and it went off one of her own teammates for a second. Bobbled and went into the hands of McGinnis, who then passed it back inside before getting bundled into touch to uh, Courtney Sims. So uh, showing a good bit of uh, skilled play there. So Canada in action at the Women's World Cup next on Tuesday on TSN. I believe it's around 10.30 a.m. start on Tuesday morning against Samoa, but check local listings. Times in your area and channel. BC trying to get to that ball. Ontario took it in to contact and couldn't get it back out, so it'll be a scrum to BC. Good job by the BC forwards to tie that up. Burnham will get this going again. And that's stolen against the head by Ontario. They've taken it a good 10 meters thanks to the work of uh, number eight, Mackenzie Fain. Got a bit of a rolling mall organized now. And boy, Ontario's got to get that ball out quicker. It's uh, twice they've lost it into contact so BC doing their part by wrapping the uh, Ontario ball carrier up and making that ball unplayable and gives them the uh, net result of a put in at the scrum so the uh, grandstand filling up nicely here just 11.30 on a Sunday morning I couldn't think of a better time actually to watch some rugby uh, usually on Saturdays you're rushing around and trying to get all the uh, honeydew lists done on the job jar and now Sunday you can relax and uh, 
enjoy something cold while you watch this game. It's a terrific way to spend a, a day like this. Anderson. Not Anderson, sorry, Burnham. Her uh, doppelganger, really. Now that's Crow Hutchin. Crow Hutchin scored a pair of tries on her birthday on Thursday. What a great breakout for the back row player. Now that's McEwen immediately tackled, but she holds on to that ball. Miss out pass. Now it's Anderson again. She gets it out to McGinnis. McGinnis does so well to pull that pass in, right on her fingertips, but also right on the touch line. So she stayed in play for a moment, then was uh, pushed out of bounds by the Ontario cover defense. But Anderson, what a spectacular player at fullback. She just keeps making things happen. Ontario with the throw in, looping up now. Ah, it's a big rollicking run by the Ontario number eight, Fane. Douglas doing well. Get that ball out. Now Ontario on the front foot. Uh, now they're with, with a chance if they can shake loose a tackler or two. Blue shirts arriving in numbers as the storm will reset here. Into the line goes Ashley Snyder. BC with a slim 5-0 lead. Try would really help Ontario's confidence now. There's a chance outside to the wing, Katie Svoboda. Svoboda nearly had a try off a pass from her sister, and Katie Svoboda will score. So Katie Svoboda, one of two Svoboda sisters on the field, gets it done for Ontario. Great piece of individual running by her. So that might get the jitters out from the Ontario Storm. <laughs> Seeing the conversion kick set up here. And it is sister Sarah Svoboda that will try and uh, Add the conversion here for Ontario. So uh, great to see uh, one sister helping another sister's effort out there. Well, that's a well-struck ball, but it'll stay right. So we're tied at five here. So this is uh, going to be a tight one for Ontario if they want to take this 2014 NWL title. Uh a win will give it to them outright, but uh, as we mentioned, all those other scenarios where they might need a bonus point, staying within seven points of BC, if BC won, or getting four tries. So a, a few scenarios still to play out. Uh, but even with a BC bonus point win, I feel like it would go to Ontario based on the points differential. Is that right, Dustin Hopkins? I don't know. Spin pass left to Ontario. Nearly goes into touch. Cleaned up by the wing on that spot side. This try score, Katie Spoboda. But she was laying on top of it maybe, not rolling away from that ball, yeah. So uh, BC now inside the Ontario half. And will it be a, a touch finder by Galbraith? It will be. It won't be much of one. Uh, probably only about 8 or 10 meters at most. But it'll be Brittany Sims with the throw in. This is a, actually a pretty tasty spot for BC to try and get it. But an Ontario hand gets the line out. Ball stays BC side now, but then stolen. It was laying there. And Labreche will take the knock on by Ontario. Scrum in 15 for BC is the choice.
So uh, we're hearing that a BC win with a bonus point, as long as Ontario doesn't get a bonus point, would hand British Columbia the title. So we're tied at five now. It's a little early to be talking about that in this first half, 17 minutes gone, but uh, some drama could play out here this afternoon. Burnham gets it back to the outside center. Young. Now Crow Hutchin. She keeps it. Goes a couple more meters. And now they're just at the try line. Burnham trying to get that ball back out. And now that's a loose pass. Picked up by Young. She's not held. Stays on her feet. Just at the line. And is that a try? No, it might be held up. No, it's going to be... Don't know how BC came away with the put in there. Put in by BC. This is a real chance for them to get their second score of the afternoon. That ball's out. Burnham flings it back to Galbraith. Galbraith steps outside one tackle but is now brought to ground. Burnham looking to her left now. That's Sims, the hooker. She gets it to Anderson. Anderson holds on to it. Maybe a touch too long. That ball's knocked on before McGinnis can find it. McGinnis, the earlier try scorer, trying to get her second. But now... As Ontario gotten a get out of jail card here with the knock on at the line. So can BC mount, or mount a big counter scrum here and try and steal one against the head. That's a good-looking scrum and a big push, and it's crabbing sideways now. Ontario will have some trouble. Could be a charge down. Oh, good job by Ontario to get that kick released. But McGinnis interested in maybe doing a quick throw-in. It was on if they wanted it, but uh, cooler heads prevail as Ontario players came in to check that kind of activity. So the two wingers in this game have scored the tries. Oh, and that's a nice bit of line-out work, flinging that down to Glenn Dinning from Charisse Dupree's. Galbraith, flat pass into the inside center, Courtney Sims. Sims, the hooker, uh, getting to it. And now that's Anderson coming in from the fullback position and adding extra attack to the BC back line. Flinging it back left. Step inside by Dupreeze. Burnham going right now. Do they have an overlap set up? Maybe with Anderson out there. Ball doesn't get out though. And knock on stops the BC attack. So BC has spent a good few minutes in the Ontario end since the Ontario score, and they want to break this deadlock. Two very evenly matched teams coming into this game. Ontario with a perfect record, BC losing to Quebec on the first day, 20 to 10. So well, that's against BC. Pushing up in the scrum. Ontario clearance kick. Gets them outside their own 22. McMaster marking it on that side.
Loose ball that Ontario's got to deal with now. BC up there smothering the Ontario ruck with players. Delayed pass. Successful in releasing Ontario now. And inside and outside on Jessica Harvey. And what a run by Ontario Anderson. Managing to finally track down the Ontario player. So great bit of running. By I think it's uh, Louise Chen over on that side. That's the kick to touch for BC. Shit. So it's gonna be a line out to uh, BC and they've done well. Contact into the line. And now a penalty coming. And and will the brush say she's seen enough of Ontario's infringements? We've had a lot of yellow cards this week. Labresh calling in the captain and calling in. Trying to pick up who that is uh, over there. That's uh, just a warning at this point, but uh believe that's the team warning. Jordan uh, Roundtree is the captain for Ontario. Burnham to Galbraith. That's a good job by the wing over there. Jessica Harvey. BC putting a lot of phases together here in this first half. 25 minutes gone. We're still knotted at five. So an exciting match ahead of us here. And we have Anderson coming into the line. But a monstrous tackle being put in by Ontario. Stalling that BC attack. And that is some physical stuff from the storm. They've, they're going to steal that ball, I think. Uh, BC desperately trying. It's come out Ontario's side. So great work in the ruck there to get that ball back. And some big runs by Ontario now, starting to qu ask questions of this BC defensive structure. Ontario maybe not committing enough people to the breakdown, but they do have the extra attackers in the line. It's Brianna Cunningham takes that in for Ontario. Now, now ill-advised, trying to do the chip through, tackled. As she chipped it, you know, Ontario doesn't want to be giving possession away to BC when they had players out to the right. So that's got to be frustrating for the coaches to see. That's Sims for BC, the hooker. Now McEwen. She's immediately wrapped up. But look at that clean out work at the ruck, Glendinning. And that's gone back, says. Labrèche, Ontario will have to clean this mess up now. Oh, and look at that. BC pouring through in numbers. And now coming through the side against Ontario. So this is turning into a bruising encounter. Both sides starting to feel the effects. And that gets a touch finder into Ontario territory. So the Rugby Canada Roadshow moves to uh, Calgary starting on Monday, setting up for the start of the National Festival on Tuesday at Calgary Rugby Park. We'll be bringing you action all week long. Go to nationalfestivalrugby.com and you'll see the full schedule there tomorrow when uh, it's all set up. Driving into contact. It's Courtney Sims. 
So two pairs of sisters in this game, the Svoboda sisters for Ontario and the Sims sisters for British Columbia. Anderson acting as a link up out there from the fullback spot. Now McGinnis just off her fingertips. McGinnis, a very handy player, but she didn't get a clean pass there to uh, further the attack. So Ontario with the scrum, a couple of meters inside their own 22. BC reserve players watching intently to see what their team can do. So BC is going to reset this scrum. Ontario put in. They've stolen one against the head already, so can they do the double on Ontario here? Look at that scrum going backwards, and Ontario getting a disrupted ball. Clearance kick not finding touch. Lindsay Anderson now. McGinnis on her off wing. She hooks up well with her other winger on that side. Harvey kicked ball. Testing the Ontario back three inside the 22. And uh, so we're back to where we started from. Essentially, but a line out instead of a scrum. But uh, that's great stuff by Anderson, always implicating herself into the back line as uh, we get a water break here at the half hour mark. I think that applies for announcers as well. So hang on a sec. Got to hydrate, you know. So the temperature, temperature really perking up here as uh, we hit noontime in Ontario. Uh, started off when we got here, uh, the old car thermometer set around 17 degrees and we had some uh, fog to burn off here. That's a distant memory, and it's probably about 25 Celsius now. Humidity, not much of a factor, but uh, certainly you'll feel it as a player out in the field and being in direct sunshine. So we have the line out here for British Columbia. Real chance going to the back of the line. And a, a tip ball to Glendinning again. Glendinning, a very uh, dangerous player in the loose. She's almost like an extra back row forward. But uh, penalty against BC now at the breakdown. O'Mogan on the field. I didn't see that change take place. Uh, she is on Fidelia O'Mogan. She has replaced uh, Aaron Vargas for Ontario. Well, Morgan scored two tries yesterday, and so maybe uh, that's Coach Kevin Jones' thoughts that, boy, this girl really uh, grabbed hold of this game in the second half yesterday. Why don't we give her most of a full game to try and sort things out? And uh, uh, just like Glenn Dinning, she's an extra attacker like a flanker, but uh, also very useful in the engine room. Oh, look at that. Breakthrough now. Good piece of running. And the dummy pass. Gets to O'Mogan. We were just talking about her. And has she thrown a forward pass there? No, she hasn't. So great job by Sarah Guten to start that whole thing with a big run up the middle. And O'Mogan, uh, just after we ta started talking about how useful she is, she showed what we were talking about by running up the field. Now it's O'Mogan again. Takes on a pair of BC tacklers. She's brought to ground. Ball stays Ontario's side. Oh, and the fake back inside, but immediately met is a Mackenzie Fane with a harsh tackle from BC. Now just a meter out. They're very close to the try line. And will it be a pick and drive by this Ontario unit? No, it's a pass outside. And oh, her foot just went into touch. And everyone, 
Everyone's saying a try was scored, but the flag is up. Amy Murray put her flag up, foot into touch, and that was correct call all the way along. So it'll be a line out for BC, five meters out. As we see a change now by BC, bringing Samantha Krieger on. Who will she replace? Ah, looks like it's going to be the wing over on that side, Harvey, I believe. So clean exchange by Sims, the hooker. And now it's going to be Galbraith trying to get some yardage for her team. She's done well. It'll be Ontario with the throw in. And Ontario's looking dangerous in the midfield. They are just busting holes through the uh, defense of British Columbia at times. Jillian Pegg throwing that in. Clean take. Linking now with the number eight, Mackenzie Fain. She has a lot to deal with. Don't forget the normal number eight, Cindy Nellis for Ontario. Off to Paris to replace Barbara Mervin, who was injured in the game, a win against Spain on Friday. BC counter-rucking with that ball, staying Ontario's side. So we'll have a scrum. Great spot for Ontario to have a scrum right here. And uh, you might see the backs have a quick word and uh, maybe put one of their gadget plays on, maybe going up the blind side. So the forwards might have a play where they're going to drop their right shoulders and get that scrum to wheel just a bit, not to the point where they'd get a penalty for it, but just take that whole BC forwards unit out of the play and then run that ball around up the blind side. The wing is Louise Chen for Ontario on that side. And that's kind of what they wanted to do, but disruption by the BC scrum half and back row taking away any thoughts of a quick run down that blind side. Miscue now. BC ball. What can they do with it? Advantage over. That's the outside center. Emily Young. So hopping on that Ontario mistake and making them pay. That's Brittany Sims. Right at halfway, but now a penalty. BC leaving their feet at the breakdown. Sealing that ball off. That's found touch. 35 minutes gone in this first half. And this game has delivered everything it promised. Tight, concise play by both teams some big runs some big hits and a low score so far to this point a try each one from McGinnis for BC and the other from Svoboda for Ontario and I guess we better tell you which Svoboda that was Katie Svoboda Ontario at the BC 22 meter line now quick pass down the line there and now here's a chance for Ontario wrapped up is Chen is Ontario across the line try given there we'll tell you who in a second I want to say maybe it was Jillian Pegg the hooker but we'll tell you in a second That's her uh, getting, uh, and it is Jillian Pegg, the hooker for Ontario, getting that try to break this deadlock heading into halftime. Important time for Ontario to score and take the lead. So 10 to five. Fans getting some pictures taken. Louise Chen fan club supporting Ontario. And the winger over on that side, the far sideline. Louise Chen plays for the Toronto Scottish. She's a great player when I do uh, Ontario Women's League games on Rogers. 
down in uh, the Toronto area, always calling her name out. Flags go up. Important conversion for Ontario. Extends the lead to 12 to 5. So Svoboda getting the extras on that one. The restart, not the prettiest of restarts, gathered in by uh, Brianna Cunningham of Ontario. Ball down the line. Mackenzie Higgs, the fly half, doing well to distribute. Now it's Douglas, the scrum half. And look at Ontario feeling energized as we close out this first half. They are... Uh, Definitely showing some zip in their passing. O'Mogan now. Oh, she stepped inside a couple of tacklers. And look at her just pull away. And the offload. Well done. It's your try scorer Peg linking up outside now. And now Sarah Guten. She'll fend off Lindsay Anderson. And Ontario scoring two quick tries late in this half to take the lead to 17 with the kick to come. So... That all started from the second row, Moggin breaking through, creating a big gap. And then the offload, Guten got there. <laughs> 17 to five and all of a sudden well, it looked like a solid BC team has got some wobbly wheels on their cart, and they're going to have to figure some things out at halftime to answer, A, the uh, injection of Omagan into this game, the second row for Ontario, but just the pace at which the Ontario backs are ripping through there. Guten's a nightmare. Svoboda on the wing. Svoboda in the center. There's a lot going on. That's a well-struck ball. It's going to hit the post, though. And so Spoboda disappointed. Just on 40 minutes now. They'll have enough time for the restart. BC with a high floating restart. Look at how feisty uh, McEwen, the hooker, is to get her. No, that was Brittany Sims just trying to wrestle that ball away. Very physical at the contact points here on both sides of the ball. Look at big, big tackles being put in, finishing their tackles, and that was the fly half, Galbraith. And she was tackling like she's a flanker. Forward pass, and that is half time. So Ontario showing uh, some spring in their step late in this game. 17 to five the lead. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll be back with more National Women's League Championship Rugby in uh, about eight minutes time. Thanks for watching, back with more.
So BC coming back onto the field after the, the halftime break. And you got to wonder, Ontario stayed out on the field. Warm day. BC wanted to maybe recharge their batteries in the cool of the dressing rooms. So interesting to see how that will play out as Ontario sprang to life with a couple of minutes to go in the uh, first half and scored two big tries to turn this game on its head. It was a pretty even battle up to that point. It'll be BC to restart. And we're underway. So can Ontario keep the pressure up here in this second half? And it looks like they can is the answer. Lone try from Selena McGinnis on the score sheet for British Columbia while Jillian Pegg, Sarah Guten, and Katie Svoboda have responded for Ontario along with a conversion from Sarah Svoboda. Outright win hands Ontario the championship, so they're sitting in the driver's seat that way. 
But also, uh, if they get a bonus point for anything, scoring four tries or even losing but staying within seven of British Columbia, that's it. But British Columbia can get a bonus point victory, then they would be collecting that NWL trophy at the end of it. Burnham, we've had some changes. We'll uh, pick those up as we go along. We have uh, number 20 for British Columbia on the field now, Alicia Noger. She's in the second row. I think they've made a pair of changes at second row. Ontario stealing that ball now. That's a great job by the uh, scrum half, Brittany Douglas. Oh, and a bit of a wobbly pass, but Ontario able to pull that in as Brianna Cunningham gets to it now after the pass from Mackenzie Higgs. Look at the space and pace Ontario's offering an attack now. And you can tell British Columbia is just struggling to keep touch with this Ontario team now. Look at that terrific individual running by Ontario. I really got a point to O'Magan, Fidelio O'Magan, the second row for Ontario, who really sparked uh, some movement in that Ontario team as we have the fullback, Stephanie Black, stepping inside. But O'Magan has uh, touched the ball a number of times and created big breaks and led directly to uh, the second try of this game. That's Jordan Roundtree, the captain. She's gone a couple of meters. It's a quick, tight spin pass. Drop ball now as the tackle was made. Advantage played and over, and it is a scrum to, uh, Van to British Columbia. So I have to say thanks to Steve McNeil who has done a great job working with us here at Twin Elm Rugby Park to make everything just right. Uh, the place prepared and looking terrific every day and uh, you know, always there with a smile and uh, helping us through our different uh, requirements. And uh, it's not easy to host a tournament of this scope. You know, picture having five teams staying at Algonquin College and all the requirements of meals and transportation and getting them to and from the field on a schedule and uh, it's all gone like clockwork. It's been nice to see all the volunteers that have helped with this and the great work by Rugby Canada staff such as Alana Gattinger and Jennifer Smart and Dustin Hopkins who uh, put in countless hours to make these things flow along. Great to see Ontario CEO Andrew Backer on hand to see how his team is doing. That's Rugby Ontario CEO Andrew Backer. So now, BC has the put in here, but can Ontario manage a shove? I think so. And they have got a pretty good looking pack going on there, but BC holding their own. Burnham to Galbraith. Galbraith runs a couple of steps before placing the kick, and that does an awkward bounce, but Ontario will bring that in, and that is uh, Chen, Louise Chen. She's gotten it to the fullback, Stephanie Black. And Ontario just regaining all that territory from that kick. Miss out pass to several people before Brianna Cunningham gets to it. O'Magan now. I think we'll be seeing that young lady in a Canada jersey before too long. Twisting, spinning, trying to uh, keep that ball in play over near that far touch line. Advantage being played by Labreche now. A chance for Ontario. Got a free ball here. What can they do with it? A penalty coming. Stepping through a couple of tacklers is Roundtree, the captain. Advantage not quite over, but it will be now. Advantage over, and this is Ontario threatening for another try. Svoboda offloads the handoff at the line. Has BC held it up? So it'll still be a scrum to Ontario, but a great job by Sarah Svoboda, the uh, outside center, to spin and go near the try line. So now what can Ontario organize at the scrum here? 
I feel like uh, we might see Mackenzie Fain and her mobility from the back row. There, finally, we have uh, McGinnis coming over as the lone cover on that side. So if you overload it with uh, an attack from Brittany Douglas and number eight, Mackenzie Fain, you might get a try there. Ontario will want to spin that scrum just a little bit, not out of control, but just wheel it to the right a quarter turn to get the ideal overload going down that blind side. Ball in cleanly, but look at BC has uh, stolen that nearly. No, it stays Ontario side, but not without a bit of consternation for Ontario. Now the wing on this side for Ontario. Louise Chen dropping back in anticipation of a clearance kick that might not find touch. So she's putting herself in just the right position to partner with uh, fullback Stephanie Black. And look at them interrupting the uh, BC scrum. Ontario now, but a penalty. Uh, not sure what that one's for, but boring in. Okay. So Galbraith delivering about a 20 meter kick there and BC will have the throw in but the clock is ticking against the uh, clock is ticking against the BC uh, hopes here at 17 to 5. Offside against Ontario, so they're going to have to be careful as well. They don't want to have someone in the sin bin and open the door for a BC comeback here. Ontario currently don't have the bonus point, so that's part of what BC's doing is they've got to make sure that Ontario doesn't get a fourth try or it's all over, but they've also got to score points of their own in order to get into this game and win it. Brittany Sims with the throw in. Nice link up to Burnham, the scrum half from the line out. Now, that's a big kick from Courtney Sims. Asking some questions of the back three of Ontario. That's Lindsay Anderson, the fullback, being aggressive there and trying to get that ball back for her side. And they've done it. BC have gotten that ball at the breakdown. Ontario doing what they can to Halt the forward progress. McEwen. She's driven back. Finally goes to ground to halt the uh, recession. Oh, and some handy running now. That's Burnham. The scrum half. And uh, McGinnis driven into tackle. And that was actually uh, Laura Crow Hutchin. She runs like a scrum half. Number eight. And... Uh, Great link up with McGinnis before McGinnis was bundled into touch. <coughs> Jillian Pegg who scored a try for Ontario throwing in, but uh, we'll have a scrum in 15, wasn't straight. So these two front rows coming together and this is really BC's first chance in the second half to threaten the Ontario line. What can they do with it? Anderson playing scrum half now, which may put some spark into the attack. Laura Crow Hutchin, she's wrapped up. Her feet just stay away from the touch line. She does well. 
Anderson now back inside. Dropped ball to the replacement, Alicia Noger. Replacement second row. And so it'll be scrum to Ontario. I really think on balance, Anderson is probably the first choice scrum half in this game. We've seen uh, Jessica Harvey come off the field as well. She was the wing on the uh, near sideline here. In for her, number 21, Kira Malone, who scored a couple of tries here this week, and she can uh, prove to be a handful when it comes to the pace department. Oh, and, oh, some slugging going on there. And uh, flanker Gabrielle Hindley holding on to her side after she uh, got some fists from an Ontario player. And I don't know if there won't be something said about that after. Drop ball by Ontario. And things getting nuggety out there. BC's got it. Now advantage still being played. BC side. Anderson now. She links up with Galbraith. Flat pass. To the inside center, Sims. And this is more like it for BC. They're on the front foot now, just five meters out. And one more outside, McGinnis. She's connected, and is that a try? No, it's not. Yes, it is. Try given over on that far corner. I think it was uh, 22, no, uh, maybe 23, Samantha Krieger for BC. Not sure Krieger's gone on the field yet. Got to confirm that. Dustin over by that Government of Canada sign. Uh, can you pick up the number of that player all the way over there? That's 22. So she's 22 is listed as front row Rosemary Lang. So I don't think that's the case. So um, is it Annabelle Arnott maybe? No, Arnott It's not blonde. So I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb, maybe say it was Samantha Krieger, but we'll try and get confirmation for you. So this is a big kick as... Uh, we add the points here for British Columbia. It's 17-10 with a big conversion kick. <clears throat> They'll need all the points they can get here. About 10 minutes gone in this second half. That well short of the target. So we are confirming it's uh, Samantha Krieger with the try there. So now we'll have a replacement for British Columbia coming on. Number 16, Chelsea Minter coming on. Um, Laura Crow Hutchin coming off. So there'll be an adjustment. Uh, not sure who's going at. Because Minter's a front row replacement, but uh, Laura Crow Hutchin looks like uh, she's been banged up a little bit. We'll see what the uh, front row shapes up like right now because you've got McEwen and Schamberger in the front row. So I guess, in essence, Minter could go as a back row player. She'd be a big number eight. So BC feeling buoyant after that score. And now Lindsey Anderson at scrum half providing some spark for this team. Right here, right in front of our position. And managing to hold on to that is Glenn Dinning. She's done well at the second row spot, feeding that ball back. Anderson, great service to Galbraith. Now the outside center, Emily Young, pipping in there. And immediately to the replacement for uh, British Columbia there, 16, Chelsea Minter. His dad had a birthday there yesterday. McGinnis trying to link up on the outside to the uh, center Sims, but the touch flag is gone up, so they ran out of room on that side. So it'll be a, 
We got a, a scrum instead, or are we still going line out here? Yeah, we're going line out, and Labresh going to the back of the line out to see what's what. And Ontario hand got there. Advantage being played from the knock on by Ontario. Advantage nearly over as Galbraith is brought to ground. Lindsay Anderson holding on to it, thinking pass, but now she's immediately wrapped up. Pile of bodies there. Big crashing cleanup by Ontario. And that's gone back, says Labrache. And the player flipped over in the ruck as the ball goes back. Anderson doing a great job at scrum half. Galbraith swinging and turning in contact, keeping that ball on BC side. And now into the front row, Carolyn McEwen. And now a penalty. Coming in from the side, I thought it was just an open play. We got the Ontario physio out there looking at a player. So now time off. That's what these young ladies are playing for, the trophy on the uh, sideline there, the NWL trophy. Right now, as the score stands, if the game ended, it would be Ontario's. change we're not going to have a change but we've got an Ontario player coming right off the field to get some instructions from coach Kevin Jones and I'm not sure how much that's allowed but so yeah it was Louise Chen coming off the field to just have a quick consult with uh, Kevin Jones over the boards So Ontario will have the throw in over on that far touch line. And that's uh, gone awry. Forward in the line out, BC with the chance. So the line out as a platform for Ontario getting a little shaky in the second half. That's Brittany Sims into the line. Now Schamberger. That ball sprung loose, however. Now what can Ontario do with that mistake? Stepping inside a tackler is the fly half there for Ontario, uh, Mackenzie Higgs. Now we've got an Ontario player that might need to come out. Immediate movement on the Ontario bench. As we see 16, Misha Merrick warming up. And yeah, it looks like we've got a serious uh, arm injury there. So Merrick going on and uh, Going right into the dressing room. Not sure which player that was, but. Now that scrum not working out right. A few warnings issued by Labresh, and it's PC paying the price as Mackenzie Fain tries to put PC under pressure. So that might have been the uh, scrum half, Brittany Douglas, because I think there's uh, someone else playing at scrum half now. Oh no, Douglas is fine, yeah. So 
So penalties dogging this BC team. They're down a converted try. But more importantly, Ontario's got three tries right now. If they get a fourth try, it doesn't matter what BC does. Ontario will win this championship. So two games taking place here. One defensive as uh, Brianna Cunningham just pounds through for about a half meter. Now that is uh, Morgan Linthwaite shrugging off a tackler. Now penalty against Ontario. Coming in from the side or leaving their feet at the ruck. I think leaving their feet at the ruck. Andrew McMaster marks the out of bounds. So BC will have the uh, line out. Well transferred, Lindsay Anderson just crushed as she went to make the pass. An Ontario player poured through there. And uh, now Ontario coming with the scrum and the fans Enthusiastic about that. That ball's come out like a cannon in the back of the Ontario scrum, but they've managed to deal with it. Back in numbers to help stabilize the platform. Brittany Douglas getting it out to fly half Higgs. Now it's Omaga. Omaga has done a lot of things in the last couple of days, and I think uh, she has really put her hand up to be the starting second row for this Ontario team going forward. Now that's a fullback Stephanie Black getting immediately tackled. That ball still staying Ontario side. Now a fling pass over to Br Brianna Cunningham. Cunningham might have a path to the trial line. Oh, she's brought down with a brilliant cover tackle from Kira Malone in a size mismatch. Your little winger bringing down the big prop. Oh, and that's a try. That's a try for Ontario. And that is the championship, as everyone understands that that was the try they needed to secure the title. Anything else can happen now, and they own that cup. So great job by Ontario to score that fourth try, and British Columbia's got to be disappointed. So that is uh, number 16 for Ontario. Misha Merrick, who went on as a replacement just a few minutes ago, and she proves to be the difference in claiming the championship for Ontario. So the score 22 to 10 with this conversion to come. It, uh, it's all a bit academic now, even though there's more than. So that's a good poke at that kick by Stephanie Black. So Merrick coming off the bench to get the bonus point try and uh, so it'll be kind of counterintuitive if you know BC storms back and, and organizes a comeback victory. It still wouldn't be enough. Now the Rosie Lang fan club firing up as the big second row. Now that's the second number 22 uh, we've got on the field. Dupree's is wearing 22 as well, so we could have some confusion out there. Or is Dupree's wearing 23 as marked? So we've got 18 for... BC Annabelle are not going on, as well as Rosie Lang 
And O'Mogan throws that ball forward in the tackle. Anderson looking for a target. She finds Galbraith. Switch back inside to Sims. And so we'll see some changes also coming on for Ontario number 19, Lauren Baldwin. So Baldwin may be replacing Linthwaite the second row. Think so, yes. Coming off the field in the forwards. is uh, Brianna Cunningham and also the wing who scored the try in the first half, McGinnis coming off in favor of uh, Baldwin. That scrum is uh, wheeled around like a carnival ride. That ball will stay BC side. So make no mistake about it, BC still wants to win this game if just for the moral victory and to tie up second place. We'll have to have a look at the standings to tell you uh, where Quebec will finish in all this versus BC, determining on the outcome you know, if everything stayed as it were right now. Got Emily Barber warming up on the sidelines for Ontario now, and she might be going in shortly. Now, oh, pick by Lindsay Anderson. She's tackled hard, put horizontal. She's had a couple of those laid on her in the second half. And uh, she's a tough little customer, however. That kind of stuff doesn't bother her. She shrugs it off and gets right back in there. I admire that. O'Mogan playing scrum half for a second for Ontario. Oh, and that's a flat pass. Argument could have been made for a forward pass. Is that a clear pass? Oh, and their angle is on, but that's going to be an Ontario try. Oh, and a cover tackle just as the Ontario player comes across with try given by LaBresh. So Ontario pulling away in this contest in the second half. I think the Ontario player got hurt as she was crossing the line. She absolutely got pasted by number 21, Kira Malone, who was trying to track her in and had uh, the Ontario player, who we'll find out who it is in a minute, hadn't just curved right. She might well have been caught at the line. So we've seen uh, a change at uh, scrum as Brianna Cunningham has come off of the storm and replaced by uh, who we were showing you earlier, Emily Barber. So this will be uh, Stephanie Black trying to add the extras here. Hopefully she doesn't target badly and kick it into her injured player over there. I don't think so. That's a pretty good kick. Let the flag stay down. So Black uh, having a quiet day with the boot as uh, it was. Oh, so that's. Katie Svoboda scoring her second, but she paid the price as she cut back inside and got cut down by uh, Kira Malone. And uh, she's still being tended to, and the question is, will she stay in? She seems to be favoring that shoulder, and I think her day is done. I don't know. I've, the replacement may have already gone on for I, I didn't notice as I was 
watching her uh, being tended to. So the knock on by Ontario, disappointing the pro Ontario crowd here at Twin Elm Rugby Park. So I don't think uh, Ontario had replaced Svoboda yet. And now we have number 21, Rebecca Matheson, getting ready to come on. And that's what's happened indeed. Matheson uh, running in to take up Svoboda's spot on the far wing there. So disappointing for Svoboda to end such a great day with a couple of tries. Big important part of this Ontario win, but pull away with the injury, having to leave early. Uh, So BC showing some dominance at, scru at scrum time. Have we heard the last of this BC team this afternoon? Maybe not, as some injuries changing the complexion of the Ontario team. Rosie Lang <coughs> only getting a half meter, but uh, listening whoops of joy from her fan club. Courtney Sims tackled hard that ball Sprung loose now, Ontario's gotten to it. Ontario set to attack and they've got some numbers out wide. O'Mogan, she can't get the pass away, now she does. Great job by Harris, she's tackled on her back, throwing that ball and finding its target. That might have been knocked on, yes it was. As we see Svoboda receiving attention from the Ontario physio. She looks uncomfortable. So Ontario opting for a penalty and got to say the kicking hasn't been that strong from the fullback for Ontario, B Stephanie Black. Uh, I mean, this is more straight on, but certainly a lot farther out than we've seen her attempt so far this week. This would be a 35 meter shot. And uh, this might be about just eating up the clock more than anything else. And when the if the ball sh falls short, also an attacking opportunity um, as for sure her Ontario teammates will be pouring in behind that kick. Thirty four minutes gone in this second half or more. Is that your 40 minute timer going off, Dustin? Oh, time for another drink. And so that ball goes adrift to the left. It's coming on 1 o'clock Eastern here now. So actually 90 minutes gone, including halftime. So we might be getting close to the end of this game here as the title has been determined. And I think the winner has been determined in this game as well. Come on. Come on. 
So we're seeing congratulations being offered to Sarah Guten, the inside center, who made a lot happen for this Ontario team today. Job well done by Guten and her mates to uh, secure this Ontario championship. This national championship, Ontario securing the NWL title. BC probably just wants to cut that score line down a little bit so the headline doesn't look uh, as one-sided, 27-10. They got another try here, 27-17. Uh, optically maybe looks a little better. But Ontario, both sides, I think, starting to show some signs of heat and fatigue out there. More drop balls late in the second half as we have number 19 for British Columbia coming on, Britta Peterson. So she will uh, go on that far flank. So probably Jillian Bogue coming off, number six for British Columbia. And it is indeed number six, Jillian Bogue, who's come off the field. And number 19, Britta Peterson replacing her. Black gives away a pass here. Won't be a clear path to the try line, but BC on the back foot defensively now. Ontario, will they score one more try to wrap this afternoon up? And a little, a little game of beach volleyball broke out there for a minute. It was bouncing around. The set, but no slam. And now it'll be BC ball, but they've lost some valuable yardage. And they'll be in behind their own 22. So that's Ontario coach Kevin Jones looking on. He's a coach with uh, Aurora Barbarians women's program. Just taking his hat off and enjoying the sunshine. Get uh, a little color on that paint there. And he'll be happy with how things have turned out here this afternoon as Lindsay Anderson gets things underway again. Oh, that left, she left that ball behind. And now the charge down by Ontario. Cleanup needed to be done here by BC. That ball will stay in play. And now, counterattack from Black. She offloads to O'Mogan. Or no, that's, uh, sorry, 16. Uh, yeah, that, that was O'Mogan. Brittany Sims putting in a huge amount of work this afternoon. Now Glenn Dinning. Another girl I think uh, might see her in the under 20s or I'm not sure her age, but uh, she should be vying for a Canada jersey soon. Interesting clearance kick down the middle of the field, but a, maybe a late hit uh, judged on the Galbraith there. Offside. Rosie Lang going a good five, six meters with that touch of the ball. Lindsey Anderson having a trouble finding the handle. It's second time in as many touches, and that is full time. That will do it as Ontario beats BC 27 to 10 to claim the 2014 National Women's League title. So congratulations to Coach Kevin Jones and his staff
So we'll stay with coverage for a minute as we uh, see the trophy presentation. So Ontario finishing a perfect 4-0 at this tournament. Taking away maximum points too as we have a look at British Columbia. They gave it their all, but it wasn't enough. You know, there wasn't much they could do once that fourth try was uh, scored. The deck was stacked against them in terms of trying to claim a championship today. Ontario did what they were expected to do, and that was to secure the bonus point and secure the victory. And uh, so, job well done by the Ontario Storm. So great week of games here in Ottawa, and we thank you all for watching, and there was a lot of you, nearly 5,000 viewers this week. Don't forget, you can see any of these games. The one's missing out of the archives. We'll try and replace that while we're in Calgary next week. But uh, you can go and check out the archives on any of the story pages, and they'll show you all the previous games. Some are in two halves, some are in one half, or one, one complete game. And... Uh, it's been a pleasure bringing you all this action. Lots of folks coming up to say hi who maybe couldn't attend the whole tournament coming for the weekend only. It's great to be able to watch my daughter play while I'm at work in the office or at home. You know, just uh, keeping up with them, and especially for the players from British Columbia. A little easier for Ontario parents maybe to get out, but I uh, had players from Atlantic provinces and the prairies attending as well. It's always tough to uh, get the teams to uh, get organized for some sort of a trophy presentation because they're interested in celebrating. BC's going off for maybe a little cool down in the end zone and uh, a chat with Coach Dean Mertens. Now the Ontario team coming over to receive what they've been playing for, the NWL trophy. Paul Loader. Congratulating his pal, Kevin Jones. They're a tight-knit bunch. They both coach at Aurora Barbarians. My thanks to uh, Dustin Hopkins for jumping in and grabbing a camera here this afternoon, too. He's done a great job here this week. So John Billingsley is the commissioner of the NWL and he's presenting that trophy to uh, the captain and that is uh, Roundtree, Jordan Roundtree. And so as we see them enjoying their trophy and uh, grabbing it up, we will say so long from Twin Elm Rugby Park. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll uh, be happy to bring you some uh, streaming activity from Calgary Rugby Park starting on Tuesday. For Jen Smart, Atlanta Gatt, and for Dustin Hopkins, I'm Doug Cross saying bye for now.